All right, so today we're going to create our first feature module. And I actually want to ease into the idea of feature modules because um, they can be rather large of a topic. So we're going to do something really small. We're just going to make a, uh, what's it called, the, the user's module. So first, we're going to generate the module. So ng generate module. And whenever you do a generate, it starts within the app directory. So I'm going to make a new directory called features slash, and then the module's name is going to be user. And I believe that's all that we need to do. So that's created, and there's our user module. And then, what's the next step? All right, so we need, we're we going to add in the routing module from Angular. Whoops. At Angular slash router. And that's going to be right here. Router module dot for child. And we also need to define some routes. So const routes. Is going to be empty for now, and we're going to give it the type of routes, which comes from the Angular router. All right, and we need to get rid of the semicolon. And that is, we're using for child here so that we could add it to our our app router, which is over here. Oops. All right, and we're going to add another path here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to lazy load the user module. And I think the path I want is users, so plural. And we're going to use load children. Dot, um, and this is going to be the path to that, which I believe it starts with source. No, it doesn't. Um, does it start with source? No, it starts with at app. So the very root of our project. So sort or features slash um, not idea user dot module for the file, and then we're gonna use a hash to actually um, designate the the user module class user module like so. And what this means is that every time we hit the path of slash users, everything that comes after it is going to be loaded by these routes. So if we just do a path of empty, and we're just going to do component equals to user component, which doesn't exist right now, which we'll need to add. So I'm going to comment that out for now. And doing so will let us create routes within the user module and we don't have to worry about it in the root it also allows us to or allows the user the client side to not load this if this route never gets hit so that's out of the way let's uh, make sure we add the appropriate um, imports into our user module so I want the UI module that we have which is the root over here for all of our prime ng stuff. And uh, do, 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 I think that's it for now. All right, so the next thing is with ngrx, um, we actually want to, each feature has its own store, so its own state. Um, so it doesn't have to interfere with the root. And let's see, so we're just gonna make a directory. So source app features users and this one I'm just gonna call state. And we need the basically the same files, so actions, effects, and reducers. But since uh, the user feature only has one state that we're gonna use, uh, we don't need to separate into directories. So I'm just going to do touch source at features, um, no, user states, 
user.reducer.ts. Uh, this one's going to be effects.ts. It's going to be actions.ts. And uh, what else do we need? Um, and I'm going to actually add a index file. So, okay. So the index file is going to act as our app store type of thing, except we're not going to have a separate module. We're just going to add into our user module here. So for our user module, uh, we need the ngrx modules. So let's see. So I have the UI components. Let's give some space here. And I need the store module dot for feature. And this one's going to be of users. And right now it's going to be empty reducer. And we need the effects module. Effects module dot for feature. And this is going to be empty array for now. And uh, da, 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 I believe that's all. I'm going to put this up here. Now makes some more sense. Put these imports up here. And OK. So let's see. So in our index file or index file of our user state, we are going to um, define some stuff. So let's go see where did I put that stuff. Here we go. So we need to define what our state is actually going to look like. So the user state is going to hold our users. User and user we have defined in our models. Yep. And it's also going to have loading is a boolean. And loaded is also a boolean. All right, uh, so that's the user state, and but we want to add this into our app state, do, 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 which is over here. So we want to add another property here called users, uh, which will be of type user state. But the re but the thing is, um, this is lazy loaded, so we don't want it to always be there. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create another site or another version of app state that inherits the store's app state. And um, store, I'm actually going to change this to as store from app slash store. Cannot find apps. App store slash app. There, there we go. So because of inheritance, it'll automatically have the other, um, where is it? These things. And we don't have to redefine it. Instead, we're just going to add in our user state. So user users is going to be of user state. So if this module is ever loaded into the browser, it's going to in append users onto our main app state, like so. Putting it right here. Um, so that's all we need in our index. Um, so now we just need to create our actions and effects and reducer so a quick side note um i created errors in the root uh, mostly because the best practice for ngrx is looks like this so when you create your action types you have the the pure function and then the two effects so on success and on fail um, I created, I think this is a little verbose, 
So I created the errors actions in the root, so then we don't have to define this part in our actions, and we don't have to add in the was it the fails. Um, to shorten this up a little bit, um, as a side effect, we have to make our effects a little smarter and a little bigger, but I think that's a fair trade-off. And also, um, I'm not going to get too in-depth in our user feature. Uh, we're just going to do a load all, which is why our user state only has this right now. Um, the idea module, which we'll do a little later, is going to be um, a lot more, what's the word, in-depth. So this will just serve as a jumping off point for something a little um, easier, I suppose. So let's make sure we get this import the correct things. So import ajax store, we can get action. And then next we're gonna import um, the models slash user. And this is gonna be the user, all right. So first, we're going to create our enum of actions, and we're going to call it user actions. And at the very bottom, we're going to export type action equals to all the action creators that we're going to make. So we're only going to create two actions, uh, one for load users, and I'm going to call it users load user s and then load users success users and this one's load users success all right and now we need to create the actual actions for both of these um, do, 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 do. So it's going to be export class load users implements action constructor. Uh, actually, this has no constructor. Uh, this is going to be a read only type equals to user actions dot load users export class load users success implements action read only type of user actions dot load users success and this one has a constructor of payload of type user array all right uh, so oh yeah Let's make sure we add these. Okay, so to quickly go over what these do, um, load users is just gonna be a an action that triggers our effects um, to make the query to our database. And load user success is gonna load or is gonna put the data loaded from the API into our into our state tree. Um, that's why the payload is going to be of type the user array, which is what we expect back from our API. If we go to slash users, there's an array of users. So that this is what we should be putting inside of our app or our app state tree. Okay, so so actions is out of the way. Now we need to create our reducer. And I believe the reducer is fairly straightforward. So we're going to create a initial state. Uh, this is going to be of type user state. Um, I want loaded to be false at first, as well as loading to be false. And users is going to be an empty array. And from dot, yeah, I guess that's fine. And notice we're not going to export this. We're just going to use initial state within this file 
we're not going to reuse it anywhere else. And then finally, we're going to define our reducer. So const uh, user reducer is going to be equal to state action. And this is going to be a switch statement of action dot payload. And this is curly braces. And default is we're going to return the state. So before we're going to continue, I'm going to actually add the type here. So state action user state. So the state that we're expecting to come in is going to be of type user state. And the action is going to be of type action. And we have to be really specific of what type of action this is. So this is from um, dot slash user action. All right. Oh, right. Action dot type. Sorry. Okay. So we're also going to set a default parameter of state to be initial state. And all right. I think we're ready to go. So let's see. In the case that the action type is user actions dot. Uh, load users there we go um, we're gonna return everything from the state except loaded is gonna be false and loading is gonna be true and then in the case of user actions dot load user success we're going to return oops everything in the state um, loaded is going to be true this time or loaded is going to be true and loaded loading I mean is going to be false and then finally I'm going to put it right here actually um, we need to create users is going to be the action dot payload Okay, so the payload here is what we're expecting after the API hits, and this is all we need for the reducer. Now, let's uh, make sure we add it to our reducer into this part, or else we'll be scratching our heads and figuring out why it's not doing anything. So, use a reducer. And now for the effects, the most, um, I don't know, foreign thing to me since I, I know Redux from React, so this is much different. But, well, it's not that different. It's just, um, I'm used to Redux Dunk, not this, so I don't know. It's a little different. And um, this is going to be called user effects. Alright, um, first we need a constructor. And with Angular dependency management, we're going to include the action observable. And this actions is coming from. Uh, at ngrx effects there we go next we're going to import the store and this is all right this store is coming from ngrx store and the app state that we're looking at is the one that we just created from our user state and and then finally we need to create or we need access to the service that we created 
uh, API service. And I'm just going to call it API. Um, you can call it API service like this, but yeah, it's up to you. It really doesn't matter. All right, so since we only have one reducer that we want to listen for, which is this, uh, we're going to listen for load users. And then if everything goes well, we're going to trigger load user success with the correct payload. So let's create that observable. Um, we need a decorator with effect. And effect is coming from AJRX effects. And then this variable is going to be called get load users. And then dollar sign to signify that it's an observable. And if you want, you can always type it, which I'm going to do. So this is an observable of type action. Excuse me. An action is of type user action. No, that's not right. It's of type this action. Um, so this one's more generic. So you can. <clears throat> so this could be not only a user action, but it could also be. Um, and a, an error action or a router action, um, whichever. So that's basically all we need to do. We just have to make sure that this load users um, has to do what we want it to. So this dot store, not store um, actions dot pipe, and with the pipe operator is where we're gonna check for stuff. So we're gonna add in the of type. Of type operator and of type comes from AJRX effects, and this is where we can listen to what kind of action it is. Um, we're going to be looking for load users and user actions dot load users. Ah. All right, and then merge map. Um, action da, 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 da. this dot API dot get users dot pipe. Alright, um, so we need two things inside the get users. So after the API gets the user, we're gonna Get, or we're gonna map the response, which is users, to new load users success users, and then of course catch error. We're gonna do error of new add error. I don't know. Error, error, I believe. All right. So map is. Let's see. Okay, this goes up here. This goes up here. I want map and I want merge map. And I don't actually need this one. Mm -hmm. And that'll get rid of the errors. All right. So. Do, 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 do. Oh, right. And then we're going to do a tap of this.store.dispatch. Um, what is this? New remove error. All right. So uh, remove error and add error is coming from the root where we can use those actions. Um, load users is gonna, or so what this is doing is that every time an observable happens, it's gonna check the actions, and if it's of the type load users, first we're gonna remove any errors that are, that exist if there are any, 
and then we're going to do a merge map, which is the equivalent of a promise dot then. Um, so the merge map is going to call the API get users method, and pipe on that is going to be a map. So all the, the response of users is going to be put into load user success. And then if there's an error, we're going to add a new error to our state. All right. So quite a bit of stuff. Um, and then one last thing. We're going to just add the effects into our effects module. Uh, not this one. What is this called? Uh, user effects. And then our user our user feature state is basically complete um, with all the state that is necessary. Now all we need to do is test this out. And I'm just gonna do something very simple. So we're just gonna clear ng generate. Um, let's see where is this. This is going to be in features slash user. And then we're going to call the component users. Also, I have to make sure that it's generated a component. And we're going to put it inside of the module feature slash user. And of course, I forgot to remove the test file. No, not rename. Delete. Alright, um, so let's just add this really quick. Um, blah, 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 blah. Right, this is going to be, hopefully this goes really quick. Um, if not, I don't know, I may add this. We'll see. So we're going to have the property of users, which is observable, of, of users. It's a user array actually. And with the constructor, we're just going to get the store, store, app state, and store comes from ngrx. The app state is the one that we created inside of this directory, so this one. And then on init, we're going to do a select. All right, we're actually going to dispatch first the load users. And users equals to this dot store dot select. And select is, oh, what the hell? There we go. And the select just takes in a state, or it sta takes in a function that we could do. So state, and we want um, state dot users dot, and then I actually want the users. So users dot users dot users. So that should. It's basically all we need to do. Um, in here, we're just gonna do an ng four. Ng four let user of users, and we're gonna use the async pipe. <clears throat> and in here we're just gonna do uh, user dot username for now. So we just do ng serve and see if it works. All right, I should probably do this. Um, Okay, so now it's gonna do this. I did not do the local host. All right, um, that's fine. Actually, I don't care. We don't need to be logged in for this. So I just need to go slash users and. 
Something is wrong. Cannot find module user dot module. Wait, what? <clears throat> oh, right. There we go. So now we have all of our users being displayed. All right, cool. All right, so styling isn't really a big part of this um, course tutorial series, but I just wanted to go over quickly what I did. I'm just gonna, I created a PrimeG card um, to display more data. So since we're using user of the users array, uh, we're going to get uh, the username. We're also going to use the created date. Uh, we're using a pipe here for the date to make it a little prettier on how it looks. Um, and then we're also displaying the ideas and bookmarks and just the length of it. Um, this actually wants, I want a parentheses around the value, so I'm going to do this. And then if these links don't exist, then I'll just default to zero. So with that, um, this is what the user page looks like. I'm just gonna get rid of this. And I, I think that looks pretty nice for what we want. Um, also, I added a another link in the navbar with just a label and a router link. That's this part here. So we could easily get here by navigation. And uh, and then I add a couple of styles. So I gave the card one rem each, um, no margin on the H2, and then the info thing with display flex, and then the links, I gave the anchors a, a little bit of margin. So the info, which is here, is now on one line. It's separated by just space between so yeah um not too much for styling but just enough to make it look pretty nice all right and then uh we're not gonna go over these links not doing anything yet uh because i want to get the idea module to to for these things to link to that and uh yeah all right i'll see you guys next time